that comes once in a lifetime And I'm pretty sure that you are that love of mine Cause I'm in a field of dandelions Wishing on everyone that you'd be mine And I see forever in your eyes I feel okay when I see you smile wonderful couple has decided that we're going to add more time to being under the chuppah by doing an extra ceremony. Now that works out fine for them because usually there's two cups of wine, now there's three cups of wine, so they're going to be happy. But that means all of you are going to have to wait a little bit more until we get to the food, right? Mm -hmm. What we're about That'll to do it. is to um, okay. say goodbye to the Sabbath day, to Shabbat, and welcome in the weekday, especially this week, because this is the wonderful moment that this week is offering us that we all get to set up, celebrate together. So I'm going to ask that everyone please rise once again. We're going to light one of the candles. I think. <laughs> you got it. We'll wait for the wax. It's a trick candle. It's a trick. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like something your father would have had from his old store. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna burn some of the wax off. Yeah. And we have we have the candle, which is part of the Habdallah ceremony. We have the wine. However, we don't have the spices. That's where your sister comes in. She's gonna lend me her bouquet at a certain point. Sure. Not yet. You'll come over. So, Marcy, do you want to hold it? Yeah. yeah. Sure. Which cup am I doing? Here, you want, this you one? Want yeah, that cup's good. Holds more wine. Here we go. Holds more wine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're having a lot of fun under here, so. <laughs> Eliyahu Hanavi me And because we're doing so much under the chuppah right now, I'm not going to do the longer version of no. Abdallah. All the words will be the same, but some of the melodies will be a little bit shorter. Hine 
Yisrael Yeshua Tiev Tach Velo Evchad Ki Ozi Vizimrat Yadonai Vayili Yeshua Shavtem Mayim Bisos Homimane Yeshua Ladonai Hayeshua Lam Chaper Chatecha Sela Adonai Tzvot Imanu Minskab Lanu Leyao Kov Sela Adonai Tzvot Rashrei Adam Boteach Bach Adonai Oshia Melech Yanenu Biyom Koreinu La Yehudim Hayta Urabi Simcha B'Sasson V'Ikar Kain Tia Lanu Kos Yeshua Resa V'Shem Adonai Akra Baruch Hatta Adonai L'Mel Cholom Borei Pri Agafen Amen Lauren Anyone? Do I look good with a bouquet? Baruch Hatta Adonai L'Hinu Melech Cholom Borei Mine B'Samim And it's nice to raise the candle to the height of your beloved's eyes. How's that? Yeah. But, but you're going to drip, though. Baruch HaTadonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Borei Meorei HaEish. Baruch HaTadonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Amabdil ben Kodesh Lechol, ben Or Lechoshech ben Yisrael Amim, ben Yom HaShvili Sheshit Yimei HaMaseh, Baruch HaTah Adonai, Amabdil ben Kodesh Lechol, Amin. By the way, this is for me to drink. You guys can have the other two. Uh, okay. uh, how about we all sing? Shabua Tov, 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 You may be seated. So it was a lot of fun watching Garrett with all the dripping wax up here. <laughs> And uh, just know that the tablecloth now has wax on it. Right. Underneath the chuppah, you may have noticed we have a very special uh, candle lit. And at every uh, joyous occasion, at every simcha, there's always a tug at our hearts because people are always thinking of those that they wish could be with us today. Those are the earlier generations of the family, um, etc. And sometimes there's people that may be, uh, may be on this earth, but um, they couldn't make it today. So you're thinking of them because you know that they're here in spirit as well. So that's what this candle is all about. But now, to start the wedding ceremony, I chant the following. Baruch haba b'shem Adonai Mi adir al Mi baruch al hakol, mi gadol al hakol, v'yivarech echatan ve'akala. May you who are supreme in power, blessing and glory, bless this bridegroom and this bride. Amen. In happiness, and joy. We thank God for God's blessings of love, which we are all here to celebrate today. Formally consecrating the love of Garrett and Marcy for each other. May they always rejoice in their love, graced by delight through their mutual affection. Dear God, source of all blessing, fulfill every worthy wish of their hearts. Open their eyes to the beauty and the mystery of the love they hold for each other every day as today. May their life together embrace and nurture the promise of this moment so that all who know them will call them truly blessed. And to this, let us all say, Amen. Amen. There are, as I said, two cups under the chuppah. We had that third one for Abdallah. And those two cups, wine is a symbol of joy. And therefore, our joy is overflowing. And I got to see it from your families already that this is just a very, very special evening, etc. 
There's yes. incredible joy already filling the, the room. But we'll add the wine to add that little extra joy. Because we offer blessings over wine because of what it symbolizes. I take this first cup and I offer the words. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Bore pri hagafen Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Asher kitchenu mitzvotav V'tzivanu al arayot V'asarlanu et arusot Lanu et anusu od lanu, ayedechu pa vikidushin, baruch atadonai, mikadeshamo Yisrael, ayedechu pa vikidushin. And as you share this cup of wine, just don't drink the wax that fell in there. Oh, okay. oh I see that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Save some for Marcy. I thought you were joking. Yeah. There's actually wax in there. Be mm-hmm. careful. Good girl. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was yeah. very dainty of them. They each took a, a delightful little sip. Yeah. We'll see in an hour and a half when I finish the ceremony what they do with the second cup. Yeah. <laughs> but of course... As you share this wine, this cup of wine, so may you share all things from this day on, of course, with complete love and complete understanding. So, I saw that you had that special police force come down with the rings, so you are ready for the rings, correct? Yes. Yes. And Garrett, if you take the ring that you're going to give to Marcy. Smaller one. Yes. And I want you to know that it's not putting it on the finger she's going to wear it on. You take your right hand and with your pointer finger, point it towards him so all the witnesses can see what he's doing. And get, oh, he's really, uh, <laughs> and repeat after me as you put it on her finger. Hare at. Hare at. Mikudeshet li. Mikudeshet li. Bitabat zo. Bitabat zo. Kedat Moshe. Kedat Moshe. The Yisrael. The Yisrael. And now will you do me a favor, when you do that in English, please look at Marcy, okay? Okay, yeah. <laughs> With this ring. With this ring. You are consecrated to me. You are consecrated to me. As my wife. As my wife. In accordance. In accordance. With the law of Moses. With the law of Moses. And the people Israel. And the people Israel. And Marcy, you can place it where it's most comfortable at this time. You guys have to... Oh, you're going to do it for her. I'm impressed. Okay, go ahead. Mm. Oh, it goes on the other hand. Oh. <laughs> Figure it and out. And Marcy, yeah. you have a ring. Those of you that heard the blessing that Garrett uh, recited, it's really legalese, but we want to have a little extra romantic word. So we're taking out of the Tanakh, out of the Bible, from Song of Songs, as she places it on your pointer finger in your right hand, and repeat after me. Anila Dodi. Anila Dodi. Vidodi Li. Vidodi Li. I am my beloved. I am my beloved. And my beloved is mine. And my beloved is mine. And Garrett, you can place it where it is most comfortable at this time. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So, uh, well, you could try right. to play. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. Fits. Okay. It fits. I often like to point out that we signed the ketubah before we came into this room. And legally, that means that the two of them were already married by that ceremony alone. But there are other parts of the ceremony, and to share with everyone, you'll, hopefully you'll have an opportunity to see this absolutely gorgeous uh, ketubah that was made for them. I'm going to read a little bit of it for you. It says, and make sure I keep it away from the flame. Yes. Be'achad b'Shabbat, shisha yamim lechodesh kislev, shnat chamishat alafim u'shva meot u'shmonim ve'arba l'briat olam liminyan she'anu monim kan b'Cedar Grove, New Jersey. Artzot habri echechatan David Mayer ben Hersh Label Ubluma Devora l'mishpachat Frank. Amar la lahada betulta masha lea bat nachum the malka le mishpachat schlanger haveli laantu kedat Moshe Yisrael. And it goes on with its legalese until to the bottom. It says that both of you have received and accepted this as your ketubah. 
and Hakol Sharir Vikayam. It is all legally done and officially done. We have two witnesses that have signed it. But there's an English part. And I will tell you honestly, the English part is not a translation of the Hebrew. It's a lot more romantic and beautiful and meaningful than just legalese in the Hebrew part. It says, on the first day of the week, because Saturday night begins in the Jewish calendar, the first day of the week, uh, the sixth day of the month of Kislev in the year 5784, corresponding to the 18th day of November in the year 2023, here in Cedar Grove, New Jersey, United States of America, in the presence of family and friends, the beloved Garrett Andrew Frank, son of Harold and Leslie, and Marcy Lynn Schlanger, daughter of Nathan and Melissa, entered into the covenant of marriage. As we embark on life's journey, we promise to love, cherish, encourage, and inspire one another. Our hearts fuse together, creating a unique song with friendship and compassion at its core. Through this union, we vow to value and support each other, always striving to show sensitivity to each other's needs. We shall nurture one another emotionally, spiritually, and intellectually, always mindful of our respectful qualities respective qualities and strengths, may we continue to grow together, maintaining the courage and determination to pursue our desired paths. We promise to celebrate life's jo joys and grace and overcome life's adversities with tenacity. May we maintain the intimacy that fosters trust, honesty, and communication as life's partners. We shall strive to build a home committed to our Jewish heritage, a home emanating love, peace, tolerance, and charity. Through each other's eyes, we see the world anew. May we be better together. All this is valid and binding. And again, it was signed by myself and the bride and the groom, um, even though those are not the legal signatures, but we're so used to signing our names. Now, Marcy, I'm gonna hand this to you but I don't think that you want to hold on to it through the rest of the ceremony. So you can give it to mom. Oh, ah, yeah. <laughs> you know what, if Vanna White needs somebody to replace her. <laughs> and we'll put it back on the easel. Me, I know, I'm sorry. And now for the biggest warning of all. I always ask the couples to write to me separately about their relationship. And usually there's some nice bit of information I can glean from. But the two of them have known each other for about 430 years at this point, And therefore, they each wrote novels. So buckle your seat. But no, I will try to edit them down. If I leave anything out, then just ask them personally what I left out. But first, how did they meet so many years ago? And Garrett says, freshman year, Farley Dickinson University. Um, Marcy was 17 and I was 18. <laughs> and then he goes on to say, she became my friend because for loyalty to those she cared about, that was great. But Marcy said, and you were wrong, Marcy. She thought that you were gonna write, he'd say we locked eyes. <laughs> I never said that. I never said that. <laughs> By the way, I'm not a marriage counselor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we locked eyes in the bookstore at FDU, but Marcy would say our group of friends overlapped, and that's basically it, and she lists your ages as well. Um, but Marcy goes on to say that your, your story was long and winding, and this was an interesting word she added, arduous. <laughs> I'm not going to ask for details. But she did add after that, she said, but so worth it. So worth it. Um, 15, 16 or so years in the making. And again, it started as a friendship. You built a foundation. And she said, I think everyone knew. This is a good part. She, she said, even Garrett deep down, <laughs> that we were right for each other and would end up together. Um, I That's think she's true. correct. She's <laughs> right. You, can you see him nodding his head at this point? She's right. But what she says about you is that you are caring. 
that you make uh, food for her, you work hard, you, you have the same values, you want everyone around you to be happy and comfortable, uh, you have empathy, compassion, outgoing, which she said balances her, which you mention in your words a little bit later, calms me when I get angry, which can't happen that often, um, <laughs> accepts, accepts me for me, even when I get a little too irritated. Boy, this is confessional right now. <laughs> and drives and lets me be the passenger, shows him he loves me in the little ways that I appreciate. Now, I left out one word there. Marcy, do you know what word I left out? No. She also, when she was defining you, she used the word goofy. <laughs> <laughs> I decided to say, what was that? That's right. <laughs> mom, mom agrees. Yeah. <laughs> so, and what I'd like to do is just tell you a little bit of what she said about you without reading War and Peace here that you both wrote. <laughs> you admitted that Marcy can be quiet. And some people may not uh, really get to know her because of her quietness. But she is the definition, I love this, that her actions speak louder than her words. It's true. true. Which, you know, everyone's here. <laughs> yeah. This is not a Baptist church where you have to respond to everything. You know. She has the most caring heart and wants the best for me and others. And I feel this every day. I love all the O's. It's true. Through the way that she treats me. She supports my ambitions and she tolerates my flaws. Which both of you have basically understood. I think I said to you the first time I met with you that I don't think I should officiate unless you've had a disagreement. And I believe both of you said, you can marry us many times over. <laughs> but um, he has such a positive outlook. Um, um, and basically, well, you have the positive outlook. Yes. You are, I love this phrase, a happy-go-lucky girl that she sees the good in people, welcomes challenges, tackles them with her logical and practical thinking. Now I'm telling you again, there's so much more here, but I kind of like this because I remember Marcy as an athlete and he says, we have each other's back, she's the ultimate teammate, which she was way back with. And no one else I'd rather have in my corner now, this is the part that I want your parents to hear. This comes from Garrett. You're going to like this. No one else I'd rather have in my corner, right? I'm excited to have kids. <laughs> and show the importance of family that's been the rock in our lives and has been the foundation for our success. I want to carry on old and create new traditions for our family, and I can't wait to have your positive light shine for the rest of our lives together. Oh, nice. Mm. He even added, love always and forever, and he wasn't writing to me. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, Marcy, you can tell that there's something going on between the two of them, because she said, there is no one else I would want to do all of this with or trust doing it with I will always be by his side to support and encourage him and to get him in check <laughs> sounds like a wife yeah. <laughs> I will hold back and always be honest I will not hold back and always be honest for the benefit of him me and us we will build a home that operates on respect patience and love that endures any and everything that comes our way because we will face it together, and that's all that matters. Oh, amen. After reading this, I think the two of you should get married. Yeah, so, I think that's a good idea. And, <laughs> Let's do it. And it, it's kind of it's nice watching the two of you respond to what you each wrote, but I loved the comments from the side <laughs> from the parents as well. So the reality is I only have a few simple words for you. And getting to know the two of you as a couple, because I remember her sitting in the social hall of our synagogue doing her homework when she was a little girl, right, Mom? Mm -hmm. And so go back many years, and yes, I did officiate at her bat mitzvah, so I've watched so many years of her life go by, 
But seeing the two of you as a couple, that is really special. And of course, reading your words and getting to share it with everyone here, it's easy to see that both of you have come to understand that marriage means that you belong to one another. And also, you belong with one another, which is quite meaningful. And I want you to, I don't think you need this message from me, but I want you never to forget that happiness is not found. You don't find happiness. You actually create it. It's what you continue to do that creates the happiness for one, for one another. And success in a marriage is more than just finding the right person. It's being the right person to the other, which is quite beautiful. So in your marriage, May you give what is needed and even more, and may you take what is needed and no more. Mm -hmm. And may you make of your home a sacred shrine in which God's blessings of contentment, of harmony, and of peace will always abide. So, there's a cup, second cup of joy and that second cup of wine. And there are seven blessings. There are, I counted, about 750 people in the room right now. <laughs> and I want them to surround you with their joy and their happiness for being here with the two of you. So at the end of each of these blessings in the Hebrew, I want to hear a hearty amen so that they get the surround sound of your responding to each of these blessings even if you don't know what I'm saying in Hebrew, but the seventh blessing after the Hebrew, I will read it in the English. And the first blessing. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Borei pri hagafen Amen. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Shekol bara lichvodo. Amen. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Yotzer hadam. Amen. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Asher yatsar dadam mitzamo Vitzelem dimutam yuto, fit kin lo mi men ubinyana de ad, baruch atadonai, yo tser hadam. You guys are good. So, says Vitagela akara, the kibbutz paneha, the tocha besimcha, paruch ata donai, misame aksion bivaneha. Sameti samach reima huvim. Kisamechecha Yitzircha Began Edem Ikedem Baruch Atah Adonai Misameach Atan Vechala And the seventh blessing includes a melody that some of you may know, so if you want to sing along, you can. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Ah, <laughs> Uvechutzot Yerushalayim Kol Sasson Vekol Simcha Kol Chatan Vekol Kala Kol Sasson Vekol Simcha Kol Chatan Vekol Kala Kol Misalud Chatanim Echupatam 
Munarim Mishte Neginatam Baruch Atadonai Misameach Atan Im HaKalach For the two of you. Praise are you, dear God, ruler of the universe, who created joy and gladness, bride and groom, mirth, song, delight and rejoicing, love and harmony, peace and companionship. Dear God, may there ever be heard in the cities of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem voices of joy and gladness, voices of bride and groom, the jubilant voices of those joined in marriage under the bridal canopy, the voices of people feasting and singing. Praise are you, dear God who causes the groom and the bride to rejoice with one another. So, you guys ready? Yeah. We're back, basically going to wrap this up. Nice. Have you been practicing? Uh, yeah. I hope so. Uh, he's got his special shoes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. In the last six weeks in the Jewish world, it's been extra yeah. difficult emotionally. They're getting a little better. And we've noticed once again that the world is quite fragile. And sometimes there are parts that break, you know, all the time. When the glass is broken, there are pieces that seem to be impossible to put together. And that's sometimes the way that we look at the world, that it seems impossible to put those pieces back together. But the two of you, as a couple, have more power now to actually add more goodness to this world. While the world may never get perfect, it can get even better because of both of your qualities and the fact that you've joined together. And again, you do make great teammates, I'll put it that way. But that's quite meaningful but Marcy especially wanted me to add the following, that the symbolism of Garrett to step, am I not going there? No, you could do it. Okay. I'm excited. The symbolism of Garrett stepping on this glass signifies his last chance to put his foot down. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> since both of you had joined voluntarily in this ceremony, which binds you together in marriage, abiding by the laws of the state of New Jersey and acting in accordance with the law of Moses and the people of Israel, the two of you are now husband and wife. You ready? <laughs> this evening. I'm here on behalf of Elegant Music Group. We're going to be providing the soundtrack to tonight's celebration. We are so 
So excited that you're all here in this room with us tonight to celebrate our happy couple. Y'all ready to have a good time tonight? Oh, dang, people, you were louder in cocktail hour. I need a little bit more than that. It's Saturday night, people. You ready to have a good time tonight? We're gonna kick the night off by introducing some special people coming right through that doorway, folks. First up, please help me welcome Marcy's grandmother, June Firestone, escorted by Jeremy Deluzio and Luke Corso. Help me welcome Garrett's grandmother, Evelyn Dickman, escorted by her grandsons, David and Brad. Folks, help me welcome the parents of the bride tonight, Nate and Melissa Schlanger. Now, folks, make some noise for the parents of our groom, Harold and Leslie Frank. Now, folks, it's time to get even louder out there tonight. Let's introduce our wedding party. First up, help me welcome Jen and Anthony. of applause going for Dory and Mark tonight. Come on. Folks, make some noise out there for Nadine and Roche. I got my head out this I'm blasting off favorite tunes. I only got for Alexandra and Chirose tonight. Help me welcome Christina and Ryan. Folks, make some noise for Judith and Adam out there. Let's hear it for Carly and Sean tonight. And of course, put those hands together for Jackie and Juan. Let's hear it. And last but not least, make some noise for your matron of honor, Lauren, and your matron of honor, Patty, coming out with groomsmen, Steven. Folks, one more time for our parents, our family, and our wedding party out here tonight. Give them a big round of applause. Now, you all ready for our grand introduction tonight? 
If you can, we're going to ask that you please rise from those seats at this time and direct your attention to the top of our grand staircase. Let's get those hands clapping out there nice and loud, folks. Come on. Clap those hands up to the beat. The reason we're all here to celebrate some love tonight, folks. Help me welcome the brand new Mr. and Mrs. Garrett and Marcy Frey. Your allegiance, get your boutiques on All black everything, black cards, black cars All black everything, and our girls are black birds Riding with they tillagers I get more in depth if you boys really real enough This is like familiar, I'll explain later But for now let me Let's hear it from the new Mr. and Mrs. Frank out there tonight Trying to get back, I gave the other grip I lost a flip for five stacks Yeah, I'm talking five comma six zero Shot zeros, here the Back to running circles round now we squid up, hold up Life's a game but it's not fair I break the rules so I don't care uh -huh. So I keep doing my own thing Walk and call again The new Mr. and Mrs. Frank, everybody Come on, put those hands together and let them hear it Almost there, don't give a shout Only thing that's on my mind Is who gonna run this town One more time for Marcy and Garrett out there tonight, folks. Let's hear it for your bride and groom. One more dip, one more dip. Oh, let them hear it, folks. Come on, come on. We can do better than that. In the moments when I hear my voice but don't feel like myself, wish I could hold you. It's only you. In the moments when I walk these city streets with someone else, I wish I told you. It's only you. Oh, you. Only you. When the night is over, out of all the places I could choose, I go to you. Only you. Feel you just below the surface, darling. All I wanna do is go to you. This much I know it's real Oh you Only you When the night is over Out of all the places I could choose I go to you Only you Feel you just below the surface darling All I wanna do is go to you Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we're going to ask that you grab one special person. Bring them on out and join your bride and groom on the dance floor. Here we go. Oh, you. That's right, grab somebody special, come on. Things look so 
We're gonna fill this dance floor up, people. Let's go. I want you to sing it. Here we go. by going to the right. You ready? On my count. One, two, one, two, three, to the right. Hey. Circle. We're gonna go to the left now. You ready? We're gonna go to the left. On my count. One, two, one, two, three, to the left. Hey, hey, hey. Boy, hold on. We have special chairs. Hold on. We got special chairs. All right. We're going up anyway. We have some special chairs out here. If you're on the outside, clap those hands up. Come on. Hey. Yeah, we got the napkin now. Make some noise for Marcy one time.
Y'all ready to party tonight? When you're ready. Folks, how about a nice hand for Craig and Ancilla out here for the blessing over the holla and the wine tonight. A nice round of applause for these two. Hi, everybody. Okay. Okay, I didn't really know I would be the one to go first, but uh, here goes. Okay. This is a toast to Garrett and Marcy. Life is unpredictable and full of little surprises. 
Like when Garrett graduated from Penn State with a degree in economics and told us at graduation, I hate economics. <laughs> or when Garrett went back to college for two years to take his prerequisites for his physician's assistant program and then decided that he didn't want to follow a doctor around entering medical data on a laptop. But then things changed. They turned around when Garrett got a job as a surgical assistant for a busy oral surgery practice. With all his schooling and his EMS training, he thrived in his new position and became a valuable asset to the practice. And then one day Garrett came to me and said, why should I assist a doctor when I could be the doctor? Well, the rest of this story is, the rest of this is a history. Garrett got into several very good dental schools, graduated on time, and did two one-year internships. Now he spends his Mondays as part-time faculty in the oral surgery department teaching dental students how to extract teeth and do other oral surgery procedures. Now, let's get back to when Marcy entered the picture. So Gar as everybody knows by now, Garrett and Marcy met freshman year of college at FDU. We met Marcy at the very first time that we went up to visit Garrett at school. Both of them insisted they were just friends. But the one thing that always stuck me, struck me as odd is when I asked them what they were going to do this Friday evening, they said they were going to do Garrett's laundry. I don't recall any time in my life when any of my friends had their female partners helping them do laundry on a Friday night. So I knew something was going on here, but I was never quite able to figure out what it was. Fast forward to the present. I don't really know the true story of how Garrett and Marcy got reconnected. Some of that story was told last night by Patty, but I'm not sure we've heard the entire thing. But when I see Marcy and Garrett together, I marvel over how much they complement each other. They say opposites attract, but this is the extreme example. Garrett can be impulsive. Marcy's cautious, well thought out, premeditated. Garrett can be a little hyper. Marcy's cool, calm, collected. Garrett can be a little disorganized. With Marcy, spreadsheets are her best friend. Garrett has been known to be chronically late, especially for family events. With Marcy, at least we have one person in the family where they would never get there. Garrett has been known to procrastinate, but Marcy likes to stay on top of things. And Garrett does have some anxiety issues, and Marcy's really gotten good at calming him down. I know it's a cliche to say that Garrett and Marcy bring out the best in each other, but it's so obvious that this is the case. And when you see them together, you can see how happy they make each other. So let's have everyone raise their glasses to make a toast. As a quote from the movie Goodwill Hunting, it doesn't matter if the guy is perfect or if the girl is perfect, as long as they are perfect for each other. May Garrett and Marcy spend a lifetime of health, happiness, and love together. Cheers! Hello, everybody. Glad to see everybody here. First, uh, Melissa and I want to thank uh, Leslie and, and Harold for the wonderful rehearsal dinner last night. It was, it was an awesome dinner, and it was a great opportunity for our immediate families to come together and celebrate with Marcy and Garrett. That's only a couple of pages. Also, many thanks to Leslie and Harold for helping Garrett become the fun-loving, kind, charming, and family-oriented person that he is. We also love Garrett for being tall and lanky, as Patty mentioned last night. Leslie and Harold, you have a beautiful family, and Melissa and I are so, so happy that we are now one big family. 
And we look forward to many, many years of love, happiness, and good health together. Amen. Also, we would like to thank each and every one of you for being here tonight. tonight. You are family, you are friends, and we are blessed to have you as such. Here, this, this has brought meaning to our lives, and our celebration of Marcy and Garrett would not have been complete without all of you. Thank you for all your love and support that you have shown us. So, Mara. Yeah, I think I'm getting somewhere. Marcy and Garrett. Oh, you all right? All right. Marcy and Garrett. Yeah, clean up. Clean up first, and then we'll... Uh... Sorry. All right, Melissa, this is... <clears throat> This would be the time that I would start my Rodney Dangerfield routine and start telling everybody, oh, what a rough week I had, but I'm okay now. I would tell you, life ain't easy. In my neighborhood, there are guys named the moose, the ox, the bear. I tell you, these guys are animals. In my neighborhood, you have to get into a fight to get out of a fight. The other day, some guy was rotating my tires from my car to his car. I tell you, life, life, it ain't easy. I went to my doctor, and he has this scale that prints a receipt. When I got on the scale, the receipt said, hey, one at a time, please. I also saw my psychiatrist, and he said, Nate, you're crazy. I said, wait a minute, I want a second opinion. He said, okay, you're ugly too. <laughs> Even Garrett joined in this thing. I told him, Garrett, my teeth are turning yellow. So Garrett said, wear a brown necktie. <laughs> I tell you, it ain't easy. But I won't do that routine <laughs> tonight. So we can get right into the party, right into the party. Without further, without further ado, let's toast Marcy and Garrett. It is so sweet how both of you love and devote yourselves to each other. You are both so special and wonderful together. Trust your hearts because they are truly special. Keep doing things with thoughtfulness and love as you have been doing. Marcy and Garrett, may you have a happy, long, healthy, productive life. Remember, there'll be times to be happy and maybe some times to be sad. There'll be times to laugh and there'll be times to cry. There'll be times to remember and there'll be times that you want to forget. But whatever the times are, they will always be more meaningful when you do them together. Take a quick look around the room and know that everyone here loves and supports you and wishes you a beautiful life together, as beautiful, if not more, than this wedding is. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to do some partying with you and everybody. I don't know, DJ, is it okay if, I, if we do a song? All right. Hey, happy see my face. Tell me when the boys get here You sit on a clock and I want to rock Want to get a better full of beer Dad wants you to join him, everybody. Let's go. Come join him. My old lady, she don't care. Come on, Bronx boys. My sister looks cute and I bring her some boots. I have a breeze in her hair. Oh,
Saturday, 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 Saturday night's all right. Saturday, Saturday. For Marcy and Dad out there tonight, folks. Oh, come on, let them hear it. Let them hear it. Their honeysuckle phonies 
that they celebrate my medals or they want to take my trophies Some are loyal soldiers while these other thorns are rosy And if you never know who you can trust, then trust me you'll be lonely oh. Are you ready for the sequel? Are you ready for the latest? In the garden of the Gentlemen, a big round of applause for Garrett and Mom out there. Are you guys ready to party again out there tonight? Bring it back out. Come on, here we go. Ready? Sing it to me now.
I'll get our friend Sean. Bring him closer. Oh, well, oh, those are arms. First, <laughs> first, I would like to say that this wedding is already off to a great start to the Marcy, so I'm not talking to my friend family to ride on the ground tonight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, you. Also, Marcy, you look amazing tonight. Probably the only person who can wear that dress better than you is Aaron. Probably, <laughs> according to that picture. Who did this? So I've been fortunate enough to call Garrett one of my best friends for nearly 33 years. Garrett and I met when we were both two years old on our first day of preschool. According to my mom, once all parents had dropped us off on the first day, Garrett began screaming and crying for his mom to come back again, which in turn made me start crying for my mom to come get me. I got over being separated from my parents by the very next day. Garrett's lasted well into our teens because every year at Seaboy Camp, you would hear someone from the bed crying at night, I want my mom! I want to go home! And it was always me who would have to consult Garrett until Leslie would drive up, try to calm him down, and tell him everything would be great, and she'd go head back home. But it would only take a few hours after she had left until he would be crying again. <laughs> This continued daily until Leslie would just finally pick him up to go home a week or two before camp had even ended. It's true. Oh, Ever since the first day of preschool, I've been fortunate enough to spend many great moments with Garrett to basically consider him family. Preschool, kindergarten through 12th grade, summer camp, beach trips, family vacations, we even lived together our junior and senior year of college when he decided to transfer to Penn State. So with all that in mind, other than his parents and his sisters, Dory and Carly, I probably spent the, the most time with Garrett than anyone else. I figured I would use this speech to help prepare Marcy's family as Garrett assimilates into their family. So first off, if you haven't noticed by now, Garrett has a lot of pent up energy. That's really just an extreme case of ADHD. <laughs> So it seems basically everyone is diagnosed with ADHD today, but Garrett's probably patient zero. <laughs> For example, almost every summer, Garrett would come with my family to our beach place in Ocean City, Maryland. Our condo was on the second floor of a 25-story building. When Garrett would get restless, which was very often, he would entertain himself by running up and down all the flights of stairs until he could think of something else to do. A typical day at the beach with Garrett was him running to the ocean, throwing a cross ball, and throwing a football, and taking off his pants to show everyone the beach is bare ass, jump in the ocean, jump in the pool, sprint to the arcade room to play a few hours of ping pong, run back up and down the 25 flights of stairs, down about 10 Capri Suns and a whole bag of Sour Patch Kids, and then just repeat everything I just mentioned. So Marcy, so Marcy's family, Assuming Garrett and Marcy plan to have children in the near future and those kids end up with even half of Garrett's energy, I would highly suggest you start messing up now. <laughs> Number two, Garrett's favorite outfit is his birthday suit. <laughs> so for anyone that thought they may have misheard my previous comments when I said Garrett would show everyone on the beach his ass, he did fact hear me correctly. Garrett has never had a problem showing it all to the family, friends, and strangers. <laughs> I can't even tell you how many times I have answered FaceTime from Garrett just to be greeted on the other end to the image of his Hebrew national hot dog and two matzo balls. <laughs> I'll let you put two and two together when I do. <laughs> so Marcy's family and friends, if you ever do happen to walk in on Garrett completely naked with everything down there just flopping around, don't get startled, just stay calm, <laughs> Last, this is probably the most important. Make sure to adjust your clocks to Frank time. The Frank family is known to be on their own time schedule called Frank time. Frank time doesn't follow any standard of time other than it's always running late. If you have a 7 p.m. dinner reservation with the Franks, you better tell them that it's actually a 12 p.m. lunch reservation just so they get to dinner on time. <laughs> also, if Eric tells you he will meet you somewhere and never shows up, don't take it personally. You will just see him again when we up some other time. <laughs> I've had to tolerate Frank time play, but figure it out and end with a story that highlights everything I've already discussed. So about 10 years ago, a few of our guy friends all went on a cruise together. One day, we had to stop 
fucking key west. <laughs> Before we were about to head out to the bars, Garrett decided that he was going to stay back on the cruise ship and do his own thing. But he promised he'd meet up with us on the island in a little bit. A few hours go by, and obviously no one's heard from Garrett. He's not answering his phone or any texts. A little before we were supposed to head back to the ship, we decided to stop into what was supposedly this popular nude bar. We walk in thinking we might catch some sight of some naked women. But it's completely empty. It's completely empty. Just a few bad old men. We'll say it. We'll say it. <laughs> and no one there is actually nude. But shortly after we walk in, who finally decides to show up? Here. And what does he immediately do without any hesitation? Drop his pants. <laughs> so Marcy, since Eric has been too busy studying for exams for the past, <laughs> what, 13 years, I feel like I haven't really gotten a chance to fully know you as well as I probably should have. What I can definitely say is you clearly are a special person because I know you put up with Eric and love Eric and love him for all of his options. Yeah. And Marcy's family, I promise you that you will always be happy with Garrett around. Uh, so even with all the great things you get with him, a ton of laughs and great memories. Bob and Tom. Okay, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Steven. My name is Steven. I've been Garrett's friend and roommate for a long time. For those of you that don't know Garrett, he's right over here, a world-renowned dentist. You know how I know that? It takes most people four years to graduate from the school, but not there. He did it in eight, everybody! Yeah. That's right. Now, during Garrett's speech at my wedding, he focused a lot on something. Yeah. Sean said a lot of embarrassing things, but I decided I wanted to be more positive. The reason I'm up here speaking in front of all of you today because I've always seen Garrett differently than most people. Many people would describe Garrett as goofy, aloof, unreliable, bad at pickleball, the list goes on. But few people know Garrett like I do. The word that comes to mind when I think of Garrett is dedicated. Dedication. In high school, Garrett was very dedicated to his studies. When we were in math class, all the other students in class would take 30 minutes to complete the exam, but not Garrett. He was so dedicated to his studies that the teacher gave him extended time. He would finish his task after the bell rang. He would be moved into the hallway. Once everyone's walking to their next class, there's Garrett finishing his task. That is dedication. senior year in college, Garrett was convinced that prune juice doesn't work. He thought, oh, it's just another type of juice. I tried to explain to him that they wouldn't recommend it to people with constipation if it didn't work, but he wanted to be sure for himself. That Sunday, we went to the store, we bought a bottle. When we got home, Garrett had his first eight ounce glass. No, dude, you can't do this. Yeah. It's not gross, but you know how do it. After about one hour, nothing happened. So Garrett decided to drink another glass. Waited another hour, and then again. Next thing you know, the bottle is done. That afternoon, we went to play some pickup basketball. And about halfway through the game, Garrett stops on the court, holds his stomach, runs over to me. Something dropped in the chamber. <laughs> Stops right there, runs to the bathroom. I play basketball for another two hours. Garrett never comes back. He's stuck in the bottom of the IM building, stuck in the toilet. Even the janitor came to the bathroom thinking someone was in distress. Just Garrett, dedicated as ever. <laughs> I could always count on Garrett. While the world was in chaos, people were getting sick, wearing masks, not knowing what tomorrow would bring, I knew one thing. I knew that if I called Garrett, if I would reach out to him to just catch up no matter what time of day it was, 
I knew he would not answer and he would not return my phone call. It wasn't until he finished school last year that he started calling again. In such, in such unprecedented times, I'm so happy that I can rely on Garrett's dedication. Now, Marcy, I know that this wedding is 16 years in the making, and we're so happy that you're able to tolerate Garrett. As Sean mentioned at the beginning of the speech, Garrett really would have looked great in that dress, and I wanted to provide proof. So the photo on the table was taken in 2010, Bethany Beach, Old Western Photoshop, and it's Garrett in that dress. Doesn't he look beautiful, everyone? Yeah! Right. So with that, cheers, happy wedding. Oh, 
always be here. And so to end this, sorry, I have to keep going. Um, now that we've learned a lot about Garrett, I mean, I knew that he has some attention <laughs> trouble. Um, I just want you to stop for this moment. I want you to look at each other, and we're going to do a quick, um, maybe this is like a counseling thing too. Uh, a quick five-finger breathing. So we're going to look at each other. So hold up one hand. And no, Garrett, you're going to take, no, no. You're going to take your finger. And every, no, you hold your hand up. <laughs> okay, so you're gonna start up here. And then when you go down, you oh, breathe yeah. out, up, you breathe in. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing it. He's doing it. Good job, good job. Oh, it feels good. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm asking you to do it, okay? I'm doing it too. <laughs> you want to do it again? I need it though. <laughs> Double dose. <laughs> and have you guys ever, you know, in your life are just angry with each other, mad, frustrated, whatever? Stop, take a moment, do some five favor breathing, and it's <laughs> okay, okay. But I love you both, and I wish you all of the happiness, all of the love, all of the everything that this world has to offer you. And I hope I'm never with you, right? <laughs> 30 minutes away. Oh my gosh, yeah. Cheers to Marcy and Garrett and to all the whole family joining together in love. I love you all. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers.